Welcome back guys, it's Maury here, and it is hot as shit today. And aside from that, we're going to be going over the best settings for Warzone Season 5. Now, you guys have asked me to actually go through this and break down my settings specifically, so what I'm going to do is show you the settings that I actually run for the graphics first, and then I am going to break down keybinds and that sort of stuff. If you're interested in my specific setup, you'll see it in the second half. If you don't care about my setup, I'm greatly offended. But at the same time, you can find out all of the best settings for Warzone Season 5, in my opinion, which uh, will be in the first half of the video. Got it? Good. Let's go. Okay, guys, so starting off, we're going to jump into the graphics tab and go through what I do. Now, I obviously record my gameplay. You may not be doing that, and I only have one monitor, which is an ultra-wide, so my OBS is actually hidden behind my Warzone, so for that reason, I use full-screen borderless. You might just use full-screen if you're not tabbing in and out of the uh, the game all the time. Then you're going to have your monitor display here. This is going to be different for all of you, just depending on which monitor you're actually using to stream the game. Then we have the uh, graphics card that you're using. In my case, it's the 3080 Ti. From there, you've got your render resolution. Now, this is going to be different for all of you, and do not copy mine, because mine is actually an ultra-wide setting. So, um, 1344 is ultra-wide. So, this is 2K, effectively, for ultra-wide. If you did not have a widescreen monitor, just pick whichever refresh rate your computer can basically handle, whether that is, you know, 1080p, maybe that's better for your you know, your computer itself, or if you've got a better a better unit and a better screen or monitor that you're working off, you might be able to do 2K, 4K, whatever the choice. So this is really going to be dependent upon what your individual circumstances are. In terms of VSync, I've got that disabled. This is my aspect ratio, which is 16 by 9, which is what a normal monitor would be. So I don't actually use the full widescreen because I'm recording the gameplay and I want it to look normal when you guys are watching it on YouTube. Custom frame rate. Now, I actually, in the advanced, you can see I locked mine to 120. Reason that I lock it to 120 is basically if you have, I'm recording in 60 frames per second. So if it's a multiplier of 60, it's going to look better in the recording. So obviously 60 goes perfectly into 120 twice. So therefore, the frames are going to line up and it's going to look smooth and not choppy when I'm recording. But if you guys are not recording your gameplay, then it really doesn't matter and you could just put it as high as you want. But sometimes, you know, you may want to actually limit it because then you'll get a more consistent performance. So what I do is don't put it on, um, don't use custom frame rate, use unlimited, see where it's hovering based on your system. So for example, right now you can see right here, I've got a solid 60 frames per second in the menu. If you had let's say yours was hovering anywhere between 90 and 100, you may want to cap it at 90, so that way it's not fluctuating and going up and down all the time while you're trying to play, you're going to get 90 consistently, which is what I prefer anyway. NVIDIA highlights I've got turned off, obviously I'm recording in OBS, so I don't need NVIDIA highlights, and that's going to just put more stress on your system. Uh, NVIDIA reflex low latency, I use enable plus boost, which just gives me a better performance in terms of the, um, the overall performance. Um, then we're going to move on. Display Gamma I leave as standard. Streaming quality, normal. Now, some of these settings are going to be different for you because your PC is not going to be exactly the same as my PC. I have a very high-end gaming PC, so I am going to have a lot of this set to high because I actually, I'm not the world's best player, but I like my game to look good. So for that reason alone, I'm actually going to basically have the graphics as good as they can be without dropping frames and making my system have a hissy fit. So texture resolution is high. Texture filter um, is going to be high as well. Then we've got particle quality high. Bullet impacts and sprays. I have enabled just so... I just reckon it looks cool. That's the real reason. Uh, tessellation, I have to near. So basically what that does is um, changes, as you can see on the picture on the side, the elevation of textures within the map. So I don't really think that matters too much. Um, On-demand texture streaming is turned off. Um... They're moving down here. So I have shadow map resolution on normal, cache off, cache off, particle lighting, ultra, just looks better again. Direct direct X ray tracing, I have disabled. Ambient occlusion, I have on both. Screen space reflection, I have on high. Uh, filmic strength, then I have on one. Uh, DLSS, I have disabled. 
anti-aliasing I have set to uh, T2X. Depth of field I have off. You're going to want this off because you, if you're playing the campaign, you want it to look really cinematic, you might have you know motion blur and film um, depth of field off. Depth of field is where something close and in focus will look in focus and other stuff will look out of focus if it's further away, which obviously you don't want because you want to see someone down the block not as a blurry mess. You want to see them really clear and crisp. So you want everything in focus. So you do not want motion blur. Uh, sorry, depth of field. And you do not want motion blur, which is where if you move your gun left or right really quickly, it's going to blur the screen, which is exactly what happens with your hand. See how I'm moving my hand? And you can't see it perfectly. I was going to say that, but in 60 frames per second, you probably can see this quite clearly without motion blur. Now I'm just waving my hand for no reason. There you go. But that's what that does. Uh, weapon motion blur, you can kind of see it in the screenshot. It blurs it when you move your gun, which is what the human eye would actually see and is more realistic, but you do not want that because it's just going to make it harder for you to see your competition. And you want to kill your competition. That's what I want to do anyway. Film grain, zero. Dynamic resolution, I have disabled, and then the next one doesn't matter because it's to do with dynamic resolution. So that is it for the settings in the actual game. Actually, wait, hold on. Field of view, I have on 100. So field of view changes how much stuff is actually within the view on your screen. So the wider it is, meaning the higher the number, you will see more and you'll see more to the sides, just like the picture here. So if someone is to your right and you have a field of view of 80, which is the default on console, you may not see them. Whereas if it's on 105, you'll go, oh shit, he's to my right. And then you'll turn around and kill him. So the higher, the better. However, there is a caveat to that, which is if you put it too high, the higher it is, the further stuff will look away from where you're standing. That was a terrible explanation. Basically, in other words, if you're shooting someone and they're down the block, if it's set to 120, which is the maximum, they're going to look even further away than what they would on something that had a field of view of 80. They're going to look much closer, which can make shooting people at a distance more challenging, which is why... I and most of the pros that play and whose settings I've watched, they all do 105. Brightness, I leave on 50. Uh, horizontal heads up display. This determines where basically your grenades and your mini map and everything are placed on your screen. The lower the number, the closer in towards your crosshair they'll be. The higher the number, the further out. And I like everything to be in the corners of my screen, so I leave everything on 100. Um, the rest of this stuff... Colorblind type, I, I don't even know how, <coughs> how to say that word, but um, that is the one that I have it set to. So you guys can do that too. It makes it look better. Um, square minimap, this is crucial because if there's a car driving on the circle one and it's in the top right hand corner, you wouldn't see it, but if it's square, you will see it. Minimap rotation means that the minimap actually rotates around you rather than you rotating around the minimap, which is, I just think it's much better to have it enabled. And that's pretty much it. Nothing else here really matters. I have like FPS counter on and stuff just so I can see if my system, it, like it always sits at 120 pretty consistently. So if it drops down to 50, I know that there's something running in the background that shouldn't be running in the background or something going horribly wrong. And then I can actually check and find out what, what what's going on. Now let's move over to the second part of the video, which will actually be me going through my keybinds. So you may not care about this, but if you watch me and you specifically want to know what I do, then this is going to help you out with that. So this is going to confuse the shit out of a lot of people. Mouse sensitivity, I have set 12. You can see everything else there. Let's move over to movement. So this is going to be, I do a lot of slide cancelling, bunny hopping. These are all the settings that I use for that. I'm not going to go through them individually because we'd be here forever. You can just pause the video and copy them into yours if you want. Now, with the keybinds themselves, you may see move forward T. What the hell is Maury smoking? The reason I do that is I use my pinky finger for a lot. I use it to aim down sight and I use it to crouch and I use it to do heaps of stuff. And when I had it set to the traditional, which is W to move forward, A to move left, and D to move right, that only leaves you with caps lock, shift, and control to do your pinky. That's three options. I figured if I move everything across to the middle of the keyboard, then T would be move forward, F would be move left, H would be move right, and then you've basically got Q, W, A, S, D, Z and X all on the left hand side of the keyboard which you can use for certain stuff so yeah that's how I do it so 
these are all of my key binds. As I said before, I'm not going to go through and do everything. A few highlights to use stuff. I actually use the typical aim down sight, which is the right mouse click. So that's how I open doors, open crates, all that sort of stuff. Just because I actually can't do both aim down sight and shoot on the same hand. I've tried doing it and I'm terrible. So I don't do that. Uh, yeah, you can see all of my stuff here. Weapons and equipment, you can see. I do have a weapon switch delay. The reason I have that is I actually use the scroll wheel and if I had no delay, I would basically accidentally switch and switch back too often. So there's a slight delay just so I can actually land on the weapon that I want. I do use tra tactical sprint, automatic tack sprint. Just makes it easier when you're wanting to move around. It does mean that if you're in a building and you're trying to be quiet, it can be a bit of a pain in the ass. So you need to crouch or you need to a ADS, aim down sight and walk all the way upstairs that way because your guy will just start sprinting on his own if you move forward without doing those things. So it does change the gameplay a little bit, but my play style is very, I'm just gonna keep pushing. I see someone, I'm gonna push them, kill them, look for the next person always. I very rarely sit still and just wait the game out because I think that's incredibly boring. So I don't really care if I'm making a lot of noise because most of the time that person knows I'm coming because I've been shooting at him for quite a while and I'm just full steam ahead. So uh, then you have some more keybinds here so weapon fire obviously is the same as normal i use x for aim down sights i think i said s before but it is the pinky finger um reload is u so just my uh, main finger up to the right um it all works for me now you will see some numbers here like mount weapon alternate fire uh, use lethal equipment um tactical equipment you see five and four so I, I do occasionally use my ring finger to go up and push those, but I also have a Razor Naga, which has 16, 16? 12, my bad. No, yes, 12, 12 buttons on the side, which allows me to basically use my thumb to hit different buttons. Don't judge how dirty this is, by the way, because that's not nice. Um, and there you have it. That is the rest of my stuff. Kill streaks, if you want that stuff, there's not much in here. I use K to plate. Um, overlays, if you want to see this stuff. Don't know whether you do or not, but I'll show you anyway. And there you have it. That's all my settings, guys. When you guys asked me to actually make a settings video, I thought, well, that's going to be a boring video. It's going to be like two minutes long. And I've just realized that I've talked for like over 10 minutes. So I apologize for that. But I hope that you guys get out what you wanted to get out of this. And I hope it didn't ramble too much. But those are my settings. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing if you aren't already. And until next time, guys, you know the drill. Keep gaming.